Hey everyone and welcome to another day of GameSpot's Play For All charity streams. Uh, I'm very excited for today. We're gonna have a nice chill stream. Uh, joining me is our reviews editor, Kelly Plaguey. Oh. And special guest, Joe Zizia, the voice of Claude from Fire Emblem Three Houses and many, many more voices. Seriously, an IMDB list to be envied and proud of. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So we are gonna do something a little bit different. We are gonna be, well, I'll be playing Fire Emblem Three Houses, as you can see um, from the Switch that we've got ready. First of all, the Ring Fit Adventure is a complete lie. I don't even remember the last time I played that. Don't know why it's showing up, but we're gonna be playing Fire Emblem. It's my save for about 15 hours in. Um, but at the same time, yesterday, Joe put out a call for, well, Joe, do you wanna explain the segment and explain what we'll be doing? Sure, yeah. So when we 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 started streaming uh, three houses maybe last like September or something like that, and we went through the whole game, and uh, it was the first time I had ever streamed. I'm really not a streamer uh, that much at all, and I kind of wanted to make it into a show. So I thought we would have a halftime show for any game that we played, and I wanted to make sure that it was uh, something the audience could participate in. So we came up with like a, a fake advice column, like Dear Abby, as in the old. Dear Abby column in newspaper, except it was D-E-E-R, like with antlers, and Abby as in Eric Ma. So it became a thing where at the halftime of every one of my Fire Emblem streams, uh, the audience would submit questions like life advice questions. And so I'd put on, actually, I think I have, it, have them behind me. I'd put on a pair of deer antlers and uh, I would answer their advice questions in like probably the most absurd way. Like it's not real life advice. A couple of times it was real. I, I taught the entire stream had a parallel park once uh and people like that useful but uh yeah it's it's usually just like a goofy segment we have at the halftime i'm very excited so we put the call out yesterday and we have a lot of responses people are asked people have a lot of questions so i'm gonna pull that up right now Great. um do you want to start off with one or play a little bit of the game and get into it or let's uh let's start off with one let's just okay let me put on, let me put on the appropriate paraphernalia <laughs> So Although I'm, not, I'm, I'm representing Black Eagles today in the shirt. I'm not using wearing my typical gold, but we've got antlers, so, you know. It's fine. You know, it's, it's a mashup of all, of all the houses. Um, there are okay. three houses. There are three. After all. Oh, look at that. It's almost like we planned it. We did not. Uh, <laughs> the first one, um, would you like me to read it aloud? Or, or? Yeah, go for it. I don't see where they're displayed, so. So I'm, I'm going from the ones in reply to your tweet. So okay, I'll yeah. go through them uh, in order. Pick them uh, as you will. Okay. So first one from at Neo N007. Dear Abby, I recently ordered some specially made mittens for my hooves, but something fell off once I put the first one on. In a panic, I snatched the mitten off only to discover that my hoof was no longer there. But instead, I now had a metal wrench in place of my hoof. Please help. Okay. Um, Neo, you've you really got to pay better attention to the Amazon description. You've ordered magic mittens. Uh, magic mittens, um, they're rare, and I'm surprised you didn't notice they're usually more expensive, but they will change your appendages into various things. Um, the best thing that you can do is just repeatedly put on the mittens and take them off again. Cycle through different appendages. Maybe you'll get something you really like. If you always wanted like a peg leg, if you were going for a pirate theme, or same in the pirate vein, if you wanted a hook as a limb, just keep going through them until you get your hooves back. It may take between one and 8,000 tries. You'll get there, okay? Good luck. I think that's very sage advice. And also, yeah. always be wary of Amazon listings. Mm -hmm. um, although I think Amazon, I love, uh, I love reading Amazon reviews of things, but especially I always order them by the worst, especially when things are like, five star across the board and then you order from across the west and it's usually people who are like i didn't know how to set this up so i'm just giving it or it's yeah like, like not the packaging <laughs> had a yeah. broken corner or whatever yeah. one star so should we get into the game let's do it like i said oh boy base of operations some um, white clouds uh i am playing golden deer um i'm 15 and a half hours in so you guys are gonna definitely have to guide me through um you're oh, assuming that i like i know how to play this game i was still being destroyed by maps by the like just menu navigation was obliterating me at the end of the game my my yeah, chat loves to make fun of me for all that stuff that is where i come in then 
Yeah, there I was you go. gonna say we we've got Callie for this. <laughs> She's our ringer. Um, I also wanted to uh, draw everyone's attention to the donation links, which you can see just below. Well, below the game, um, we do have one donation that I want to read really quickly. It's that way. On this, oh, there we go. I don't know. Okay. Yes, I. Oh, yes. Um, mirroring is hard, but we do have one. We're, we're uh, collecting donations for both Black Lives Matter and for direct relief for COVID-19. We have one donation here already from Evan Hasen. It's a $100 donation to Black Lives Matter. Thank you so much for your donation. Um, and we're going to continue uh, reading them out. Uh, you can make them anonymous if you wouldn't want your name uh, read aloud. And you can also leave messages, which we will read. So um, thank you in advance for being generous and we are really excited to support these causes you guys rock thank you um okay so i'm gonna get a quick <clears throat> like glance over my my team claude's doing well he's uh he's gonna be i don't know like an archer like a mounted archer lauren's i'm still i'm still in the i don't know if i like lauren's yet uh no you can scrap <laughs> lauren's bench him he comes oh, dang. Home. It was like right off the bat. But I mean, I hate happened. on Lawrence all the time. I grew to really like him by the end of the game. Yeah. And I just, I think... honestly, I just love to hate on him. And in particular, his haircut. His haircut's yeah. a mess. And he also, there's a scene where you can yell at him for making the girls uncomfortable. Yes. So. Very, that's a very <laughs> uh, cathartic. So I was going to say, I might keep him around just for that. I, I think that Lawrence has already had like a quarantine haircut. Before oh, yeah. quarantine haircuts sure. were a thing, um, Raphael doing well. He's he's my boy. I love him so much. So you can tell that because everyone's like D and B and C. I just went through the last thing I remember doing was like going through and honing in on what everyone wants to do. And so Ignatz, for example, is you know he's my sniper boy. He that's the mm -hmm. only thing I'm gonna. Yep. Um, yep. Scythia doing well. Marianne, of her. My fave. my fave. Well, no, no, no. Hilda's my fave. I appreciate anyone who just yells their own name in celebration, and that's why I love Hilda <laughs> so much. <laughs> Leonie, very big Chie vibes from Persona 4. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even even like kind of the hair thing. Not that we're going to yeah. like focus on hair this entire stream, but... <laughs> that's the secret, like... But there are great hairstyles. Layer of the stream, we're just going to talk about hair. Yeah. Uh, Sylvain, also doing very well. Lane just got her, I think, onto my squad, and okay. I finally managed to convince um, Shamir to join me too. So, yeah, so that's uh, that's okay. basically real strong golden deer. That's almost exactly what my setup was when I played. I recruited Sylvain. Uh, are you playing female Byleth or male Byleth? I am you're, playing you're female. female. Okay. Byleth. So, so Sylvain just kind of like was like, "Yeah, I'm in." Yeah, he'll oh, yeah. go I mean, for I it. Mean, he's the one who you can. You just have to be female. And you just walk up to him, and he's like, yep. "Yes, I'm that's in. it." That's it. That's all you need to do. So, do you get the uh, DLC where you can change her outfit? Because that was a big priority for me. I did. I'm so excited I, about that DLC. How do I do it? Um, it you that's do that option. in her room. You go back so you to your, can do it you, now. If you did it, you go back to your room and you can change your clothes there. Gotcha. Where am I going? Where am I going? Where's your phone dining hall? Where's my room? Personal course. There we go. Also, I'm very, like... I'm one of those people who gets buttons wrong, especially because if I've been going between Xbox, PlayStation, and now Switch, and so A and B has got me all kinds of messed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Eternal wait, struggle. Wait, yeah, I think if you go to the journal, I think you oh, can yeah. I think you do it there. Oh, my God. Uh, unit appearance. Is this your first playthrough, Lucy, or is this a new oh, yeah. game plus? No, this is my first playthrough. Oh. This is exciting. Oh yeah, that's why yeah, I kind of need you guys to help me. Um, doesn't look like you have all the extra I stuff. Have, I do have a dancer ensemble, though. Okay. Oh. Did you make you her go. your dancer? I don't know how I have. You can't do that. <laughs> how did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't I have no idea. I'm not gonna go through and do everyone, but like, um, I think I'm pretty much <laughs> done for the day. I you spent your activity points? 
Um, Did you that's... give people gifts and stuff to make them happy? You can teach I them. I believe I did. Oh, the I, I'm used to playing on the Joy Cons, and so I'm getting a little bit of drift, which is oh no. Weird. Oh no! Please don't do this to me. Where's that person? Let's just call it a day for today, because this is in the middle, and we will start up again tomorrow. Is that just unsynced? Okay. I want to know how you got this outfit. I have no idea. Honestly. <laughs> I want to know how I can get that outfit in real life. Yeah. For my coffee. Right. And oh, hello to everyone. Yes, we're going to partake in some festivities. Um, Dale Mer from the chat says, beat DLC on third playthrough and with the new people. Ooh. Nice. Nice. Um, should we partake in some festivities? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, Joe, how did you get involved in Fire Emblem? When you... Did you have to audition? Did you know exactly what the game was? Yeah, what? you know what? I was just uh, I was just talking to... Not to make this a really long story, but I, I was talking to Will Roger, who's a composer. Um, he composed on, on um, um, Mortal Kombat 11, and we've been friends forever. And I was asking him how he got involved with the franchise. And he told me this like super elaborate story about how he knew some guy and then they were talking and they had coffee and then like four years later someone and it was a really interesting story right mm -hmm. and people always ask me like well how did you get x role and i was like well someone handed me a script and i read it into a microphone and then they picked me it's like really how it goes like there's no like there's no super interesting story i i, I read for uh i read for a bunch of different characters i had no idea what it was i read for claude i read for Dadu. i read for dimitri and I might have either read for Ferdinand or Sylvain. I think I read for four or five characters. Um, and uh, I remember, like, when I was reading for it, I was like, man, I hope I booked Dimitri because I want to act insane. Like, I just want to, I want to lose my <laughs> mind. Because it, it was, it was a really, his arc was really interesting in, in what they presented in the audition size. But, uh, yeah, then they, then they called me, I don't know, <clears throat> maybe like a month later. And they were like, hey, you booked something uh, in this game which was codenamed, so I still didn't really know what it was. And I was like, what was it? And they were like, oh, you booked Claude. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I don't know what this is. Uh, but so, like, it really, it took, like, maybe even after the first couple sessions, I wasn't really clear on, like, how big of an impact the game would have. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until maybe, like, four months before release when I started seeing all, like, the conversations surrounding the game uh and that i was like oh okay this is a this is a big deal this is this is gonna be fun uh what do i do and yeah <laughs> that's, that's 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 the origin story that's what how do you approach um uh, i'm gonna start the mission by the way but like how do you approach yeah. you know you don't really know the context i guess of the role that you're auditioning for like if stuff's got code names how much mm -hmm. information do they give you the audition to kind of find help you find that voice Less than a page. It was, um, wow. you, you know, wow. they, they have, they had, I believe they had the character image. They basically told me like, there's going to be what we're calling a, a war phase and an academy phase. And there will be a personality shift that occurs between these two. Here are some academy phase lines. Here are some, <clears throat> um, some war phase lines. Um, we estimate on a scale of one to five, Claude's personality change will be about a two as opposed to Dimitri, who was a five out of five. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and so that's pretty much all the information I had. Uh, there wasn't really like any information on like him being an outsider or like where he was really from and stuff like that. Uh, it was just sort of like his his attitude was described and then you just kind of had to go with it. That's really cool. Oh, we, we are presented with a choice. How how do we want to... I think it's just a house, so Just a house, yeah. so yeah i'm one of those people who every time i get the chance to pick dialogue options i'm always very paragon i to use the mass effect there you go phraseology like i i'm always very nice to everyone because i'm afraid i think that just speaks to me as a person i'm always terrified of upsetting people yeah and so the first game the first playthrough always very nice second playthrough bitch yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, I'd usually do that most games. I think the only exception was uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I was a jerk. Really? 
from, from choice number one on both of those but games. I get that. I loved every second of it. Force electricity or force lightning. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Choke. What are you two talking about? I miss that game. What do you expect? They were. this game too. I haven't played it in a, a while. I, I switched to a Switch Lite and I'm worried about the text being smaller on my little screen. Oh, yeah. But, um, oh, yeah. I haven't tried it. I'm I, I'm sure it's fine, but I I know that there's a lot going on on the screen at all times and you have to be really conscious of what's happening. Especially like the grid system, like moving like any strategy RPG. Mm -hmm. I never played it on handheld. I always played it on the screen. Really? I, I am just a handheld player. I just prefer that. I'm also kind of nearsighted, so I find like yeah. the closeness of that i mean it's probably why i'm nearsighted honestly because i played so much game boy as a kid but um have you joe seen the fan art for this game by the way oh my god i used to feature a different fan artist every stream because people would always send me the, the most beautiful stuff and, incredible uh, there were some really really excellent um uh, one of my favorite uh, ruby arts r-u-b-i underscore arts on tw on twitter they were taking Claude, because um, Claude has a lot of different like Middle Eastern coding and, and Turkish references in his lore, in his clothing. Uh, they would make these beautiful pieces of art with like Claude, with like, you know, the Middle Eastern, um, <coughs> excuse me, just like Middle Eastern archways and stuff and like script behind him. There's so much amazing art. I, I can't draw a straight line. Uh, so I like I, I. I just blow it blows me away. Someone someone shot out a picture of Edelgard with a crown of thorns on it yesterday, mm. and it was just like, oh, I saw that. Oh, wow, so good. Like, what a powerful, what a powerful, powerful image yeah. for a very complex character. Uh, mm. I, I love it. I love I love what artists do. They 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 excite me very much. Okay, absolutely. Checking out everyone. We're in a good spot, although my uh, my honor is on the line. Um, but you guys are gonna help me out. Are you playing this, casual? Are you playing easy? Are you playing? I'm playing classic? casual because okay. I'm not. I don't trust myself. <laughs> I played. I, I played casual and normal. I just like there for me because I knew I was gonna stream the game. There didn't seem to be a lot of entertainment value in like cons constantly soft resetting the game so that I yeah. like mm -hmm. if I'm going to do that anyway, I might as well just, you know, just play casual. Because so I, I, the... I always thought games like that with good intentions that like mm -hmm. if I play an XCOM or Fire Emblem, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to play on on Iron Man. I'm going to play so that I lose and like actually get build these attachments to the characters and then I lose them and it'll be my fault. But then you lose the first one, typically very early on, and then I will restart and go, no. Yeah, and that's just like, you're going to restart anyway. Yeah. Although I do okay. think that the rewind mechanic in this game is so smart because it prevents you from having to soft reset. You can just rewind your actions. And I yeah. think it, it really underscores how complex and deep the strategy is because there were so many times where like I would rewind because I played on uh, classic and hard. So I would have to rewind a lot. And um, even just one movement would change the whole, you know, the the course of the battle. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, I loved that so much about this game. So well, you're on the Battle of the Eagle Online. This is a, this yeah. is a great little... Yeah, this is great. great. To jump in. Um, oh yeah, this is the lock. Everyone just yes. getting together. No matter what it may take. So how like, do we want to approach? This is like the battle of the weird foreshadow. It's basically what this <laughs> yep. is. Yep. Battle of the awkward foreshadowing. It is time. I'm nervous. Like I've played like a lot of things on stream before. Usually first-person shooters, puzzle games, nice little Diablo-esque things. Never a strategy. And so now I'm afraid that you'll all see how much, how my brain works. So I'm gonna not worry. be calling on the two of you. We've got you, don't worry. You're, you're golden deer. So you're gonna start out in the bottom right, I think. No, you started out in the top. I guess it must change depending. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you start out in the top as blue lions too. Okay. How do we want to approach this? So from what I remember, 
I, I don't remember what the field looks like, but I remember uh, I basically mopped the floor with the Blue Lions before I even remotely paid attention to the Black Eagles. But I can't see what is going on here. Um, I feel like that's what I did. I think I dealt with Edelgard last. Yeah, so Edelgard is up here. Mm. So treasure chest up here. I think I'm going to disregard that for a while, though. Um, okay, so... Edelgard is always, like, that's her spot. She loves it. Yeah. She loves that little, like, see. tower area. Yeah. So I'm afraid that if I... Let's go for... Let's go for blue lines. Like, they've got this little kind of contingent over here with Ash. So let's... Oh, Ash. let's Let's bring some people over. Here's my He's sniper a good boy. boy. Um, okay. Let's get so... To... I'm just gonna... Oh, wait, can I... Yeah, let's have you wait here. Um... I'm trying to think. Lysithia and... Marianne, I keep back most Yeah, of just the make time. sure your squishies mm -hmm. don't don't start yeah. becoming frontline fighters. Yeah, so <laughs> let's move. Um... You can, yeah, oh. you know, you can tap, uh, I think it's one of the Z buttons to show, like, the danger zone of where you can get attacked. Yeah. You can't get attacked. Oh, which one is the... Oh, here we go. Yeah, so anything, anything that's not purple, no one can hit them next turn. Gotcha, so you stay back here. You stay here. Okay. I've got quite the range of movement here. So I'm gonna have you mm, you're still pretty squishy, so let's stay there. What's um, what class is Lawrence? Lawrence is I think he cavalier? wants to become a yeah. oh, wait. view unit. Yeah, he's Cavalier. He's a Cavalier. Okay. My boy. The dodgy haircut. Um, <coughs> where is... Oh, he's all the way over here. Okay. Sylvain, let's slowly but gradually move you over. Why have you started literally as far away as possible from where I needed you to be? Um, I, I like you being frontline. See, this is the thing, like, there's so many of them. I gotta move everyone pretty much individually. Uh, okay, me. Right there. Ready and willing. Look up here. Alright, I'm gonna ask for some advice. Oh, and Hilda, let's move you up front, but you can't move that far. <clears throat> Hilda her. was my favorite murderess throughout. I, I mean, you could just melt, melt through enemy lines, and she would take no damage, she would dodge everything. My team, by the time I hit the end game, I think. I don't remember. I, I'm looking at, at my chat. Uh, do you guys remember? Did I do the last battle in one turn? Did I one shot? Whoa. I know. I think I one shot. I, I think I one shot at Edelgard in the second to last battle. Oh, oh uh, my and god! I, it was either with Claude because at that point Claude could move pretty much anywhere on the map. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't. I don't remember. Uh, so let's. That. See, I, I love yeah. I love sniping. I love staying back and just like taking people out very very gradually. Yep. Um, level up. Yeah, You're telling me I did indeed one shot Edelgard and did that in one turn. That's incredible. Mm. Yeah, no. but not the last battle. You can't do the last battle. I forgot how complicated that that last thing is. Uh, uh, we have a ten dollar donation from mm. Matt Hawking to direct relief. Thanks, the message. Yeah. Message is love Claude. Joe did an excellent job playing the subtleties of his character. Golden Deer was my first house and first in my heart, but that dubstep battle music, I don't know. <laughs> dubstep missiles. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the donation. Um, who else can I move up? All right, Sylvain, let's go, boy. I love Sylvain. I. So my first house was uh, Blue Lions, and I chose that because um, we were trying to make sure that, because we got the game early for work, right? And um, mm -hmm. we're trying to make sure that uh, we had at least one person who was playing the game play each house so we could properly cover mm -hmm. the game. 
Um, and so I, I knew that some people were really interested in black eagles because of Edelgard. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try uh, blue lions. And so I did become very attached to them. And I love Sylvain. And when I did my black eagles run, I recruited him like right away because I was like, I need him to be on a wyvern ASAP. Yep. I love, I love wyvern fighters. <laughs> How do I end my turn? Um, if you're not going to do anything with Marianne... Uh, I can just shift her. I'll, I'll put her in the behind the grass. Let's just wait there. There you go. I'm just slowly like moving everyone up. That's good. You can take your time. Ooh. So how do we want to do this? Do we want to go all the way up the left, and then like kind of circle around, or do you want to just take out a little? By the time you get up there on the left, there's a good chance that you're gonna have a bunch of black eagles in your <sighs> face anyway, but. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Oh, I'm a big fan. Lost yeah. the numbers. Has got my friend Maud to play Three Houses, and she went with Claude because their names rhyme. There you go. That's a good nice. reason. Nice. That's a great reason. Maud and Claude. Uh, oh, what's uh, your take on the... Uh, you, there's an item you can find kind of later on that's like a vial of poison, and it belongs to Claude. And Claude has this, like... He's got kind of some secrets. And I find ooh. his character really interesting, even though he doesn't go completely insane like uh, Dimitri does. You have no, a, an always, opinion on the poison? I always kind of, uh, so it's probably, I mean, like, no, I'm not Claude. I'm just thinking in his head. Uh, it's probably not lethal poison. Mm. It's probably, like, a poison that'll make people break out in a rash or something. I yeah. kind of see Claude a lot as, like, a harmless prankster, like a, a you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. It's not, I mean, it's not, like, totally harmless. I think it, at one point he does suggest giving everybody the stomach flu in order to make a battle easier. And like he's ready to do it. Mm. Uh, he's a schemer, you know. Like he's uh, he's very much he's like um, yeah. he's cunning. He's like a he's like the Odysseus of of the game, where like he really always wants a chance to display his cleverness. Sometimes mm. maybe to the detriment of what's going on, uh, and that's that's a very uh, Odyssean kind of attitude. Mm. I think I'll wait. I'll hold. Lawrence there a bit and get him healed up, but I need to use the There's a heal where there's like you don't have you, if you're just in the adjacent square Then it doesn't like take up too much uh, and like a, a Unit cost I think I remember mm. I You mean remember. like a heal versus physic? Yes. Because physic you can do like over long distances. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do heal because there's plenty of those All right Claude, Hardest up. part is getting over this bridge because it's like such a bottleneck, but once you get what? through... It doesn't even look like you... It just looks like you could just wade over it. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know, like, come on guys, just get your feet wet. <laughs> but then, but then, you know, who knows how heavy those boots are gonna be. That yeah, that's true. Right, right. But at least the people on the horses, I mean, board that river, you guys. Jump over. Right. They didn't, like, teach that? It's a military school. <laughs> Oh, Kimmy Boy says you should send Ignatz or Claude to the Central Hill. On Them the on that, yeah, on the ballista. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's on it right now. Is it Bernadetta or is it? Rando. Mm -hmm. Um, we have another donation for Black Lives Matter from Ryan Obermeyer for ten dollars. Thank you so hey, Ryan. much, Ryan, for your donation. Thank you. All right. Enemy face. Oh, I forgot that I have like notifications turned on my Alexa, and when stuff gets delivered, it pings, and it terrifies me every single time. So that's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Good news, though, my keyboard arrived. Good. Hopefully, no more uh, RSI for me. Ah, good luck. Oh. Oh. Gamer keyboard. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Do you have Flame as a... Hmm? Is it a mechanical keyboard? It's softer. It's a razor. It's not like the fully mechanical one because part of me thinks that would be really satisfying, but then part of me wonders if I would get annoyed by it. I find mm. it very satisfying. I, I have, I've had one for like a year and a half and it's just... That's, yeah. It sounds like popcorn. It's great. Yeah, it's, a, it's <laughs> a, like a... Oh, that's weird. So Hilda can move forward across the bridge then. Um, yeah, it's like a half and half, partly mechanical, partly not, just like a softer 
nice. thing on it. But I'm just very excited to not... I basically have like a, 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 a typist, like a thing that you would find in an office, but it's really terrible for gaming. Mm. Um, so, got this bridge. All right. Um, stay there. Well, let's move you over a little bit, just get out of everyone's way. All right. Tam says that you should send wave after wave of my own men. A very good Futurama reference. <laughs> Where's that Bernie on the ballista? I can't tell. I it's at I, Bernie, I think. Um, love her so much. Uh oh, they're coming in from behind. Yeah, like, you I don't know what those, those are. Yeah, just just watch your your. I'm I'm gonna set there. up a little. Um, yeah, I should set up the snipers there. Yeah, Bob, just drop them with archers. They'll go down fast. Mm. Why does everyone have a Pegasus and I don't? I know. I haven't been min maxing enough at this game. Oh, Raven says Lysithia is a monster. She shreds everyone. Yes, she does. Mm. Oh, yeah, we call her our tactical nuke. <laughs> yeah. She just goes and, like, yeah, it's. So, where are my snipers at? So, Lord's there. I'm gonna move you back. What's it like playing a game where you are, that you're in? You know, like, uh, we were talking about this actually before the stream. The initial, the initial shock is interesting. Like, it's like, it kind of kicks you out for a second. But afterwards, like, after playing it for a long time, because this is a long game, there's another game I've been playing for a long time called Shadowverse. Like we're playing it a bunch. Um, I stop hearing myself. Like I, I stop. I just start hearing like Rowan or Claude, or whatever. Um, and it, it it wears off after a while. Uh, you know I've done I've done a bunch of games, so the 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 uh, the shock factor isn't isn't quite what it used to be. Yeah. Uh, I remember uh, when I was Fox McCloud for Star Fox Zero, The Battle Begins. That was like my first big role. I think I booked it like four months after I moved to LA. And like, so when that, when I saw that, I straight up cried. Like, it was like, I was like, holy crap. That's my voice coming out of Fox McCloud's mouth. So, uh, yeah, you know, like all things, it kind of, it kind of wears off with time, but there's, there's never a day where I don't wake up and go like, is this real? Is this my life? Like, is this what I do for a living? Um, so yeah. But after a while, it just starts to sound like Claude in my head. It sounds like a different person to me. Yeah. So how did you get into uh, voice acting? I started in corporate work, uh, which I actually still do Ooh. a fair amount of because it's um, uh, it's a good business practice. Yeah. Um, I started, I wasn't here, I was in Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the, the real origin story is, is weird. Uh, I make the joke that, oh, I got into voiceover pretty much like any, everybody did which was, I was a military intelligence officer for the United States Air Force, and then left the Air Force to work in similar capacities for the government, suddenly discovered voiceover one day, and then quit my job 16 months later. Um, wow. Really not, not, not your typical origin story. Oh, no. It was a weird, it was a really weird life, life shift. I was, um, I was on duty as a reservist. I left active duty, and I was on a uh, weekend. There was nobody else in the office. And uh, I was on Google chat with a friend of mine. We were just talking about whatever. And I was like, ah, I've always kind of wanted to try voice acting. Mm. Um, and he's like, well, my company used to hire talent for like our corporate marketing stuff from this website. Why don't you go check it out? So I did. I booked the first thing I auditioned for. Uh, and I was like, wow, that was cool. Um, and then eight months later, I sat down with my employer and I was like, I, I'm working 16 hour days uh, doing both of these things. And um, Frankly, I like the other thing better. I can either quit or we can go half time. What would you like to do? And he's like, well, we'll make a part time position for you and we'll let you phase out, which was super gracious. Mm -hmm. um, them to yeah. do. Right. And so eight months after that, I quit my job and then moved to L.A. to hunt. Because uh, you really can't do a whole lot of character work when you're not in L.A. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I really wanted to do. So I moved to L.A. in 2015. That's, oh. that's the origin story. Oh, that's that is quite the story. It's a little odd. It's been a weird life. 
I always find that with games, though. I think there's, um, you know, kind of gaming adjacent industries. It's like people never really think of it as a career path. Like, mm -hmm. I know Callie and I get asked quite a lot. It's like, how did you start working in games? And at least for me, it's, you know, when I was younger, I wanted to work in, I wanted to be an archaeologist for a while. And then I wanted to work in psychology and criminology for a while. And then it's, you kind of get to the phase where you're like, oh, this is a thing that I can do. And then you just fall into it and it's, a weird really like great industry that everyone like if you get the chance if you want to work towards something it's really cool to work in games That's awesome yeah the universe tends to like open up itself every once in a while and you just kind of have mm -hmm. to flow with it that's that's what i feel like i've i've uh learned in my life i've taken many many unexpected turns and just gotta go with it yeah and, uh, and the cool thing about the, this industry, too, is that there isn't, like, one straight path to do it. So you do meet a lot of people who have all these interesting backgrounds yeah. and have histories. Do, I mean, we have a coworker, Michael, who used to do political consulting. Um, you know, like, yeah. just stuff that you wouldn't think is related, but the, they are experiences that lead you to this. And it's, um, I think, the way it informs how you do your job in the gaming industry is always really interesting. Um, yeah. I started I started college as a chemistry major, so I completely just was like, nope, and did a oh, hard, yeah. hard right on that one. Um, um, also, wait, do you, well, before, before I do donations, let's consult here on this move. Oh, I was going to say, do you want to do a Dear Abby? Because there's oh, sure. a great one about, about Greg Chun. Well, there's always one about Greg Chun. Greg Chun <laughs> has become more of an icon in my streams than I have. <laughs> uh so this is from Geb Heart Attack. Oh yeah, I know Geb Heart Attack. Um, dear Abby, if you and Greg Chun were two anthropomorphic anthropomorphized water creatures battling in the underground of a dictator's palace, who would win? The thing I love about that question is how specific it is. It's incredibly mm -hmm. specific, and I'm trying to think of like, are, you, are they referencing a particular video game where like? I don't know. Like, is this about Echo the Dolphin? Like, of the Sega game? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's what you're doing, Echo the Dolphin. So if... Okay, so if we were both anthropomorphized water creatures fighting a dictator... No, you're, you're battling each other in the underground of a dictator's palace. Okay. So I think... I think probably what would happen here um, is Greg and I would battle like... Uh, like like a Dragon Ball Z battle, right? With super yeah. super like bombastic and things just blowing up, and eventually we'd we'd end up kind of like falling on our backs, doing like the anime breathing, where <laughs> neither of us can get up, right? Yeah. And that's how I see this happening. And then at one point we would look at each other and be like, "You want to go kill the dictator?" And he'd be like, "Yeah." And then we'd go do that. So it'd that's probably end in a draw, followed yeah. by the complete uh, dissolution. Of a tyrannical monarchy. That's probably how I see. I like it. Love that. You love to see it. Callie, please help me. I was gonna take. Um, out, so I was gonna take my archers in and take out these boys. Yes. Is that good? Yes. Because I, otherwise, they're I would they're take gonna... them out. Yeah. Okay. You don't need to get right up to them though. You can. Yeah. You stop can fire like from there. Away. Yeah. Me, so let me go. I think Ignace has a a larger. Um, what What are you doing? They probably I, have two oh, range. He moves, he moves up a little. So I've got Ignaz here and Claude, but they are going to move in order to fire. So maybe let's take out... You don't have to move them super close. Like, you can move them a little bit to the left, probably. Or to the down. Wait. To the down. <laughs> to the down? But yeah, like, don't put them right next to the peg pegasi. Oh, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to get them to hit from there. Are they going to move? They're moving right now, yeah. How do I... Yeah, they, oh. they have to move. They have to move to shoot because I think they only have a two range, right? Yeah, move yeah, him a I... little bit, like not next to it, so like a square away. Like here. And then try, yeah, and then try to attack. That'll work. Oh, okay. okay yeah. Okay. Um. It should, yeah, it should just take it out. Do we want to use a combat art? Well, we don't need to. Okay. No, no, no. no don't don't need. Need. Just he's got this covered. Now Ignat should be able to do the rest. Thanks. Should. I don't know how good his weapon is, but if he knows what's good for him, he should. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. He's despite being kind of a little bit weedy, he is my most powerful uh, boy. <laughs> He's so with pure. Another, with another quarantine hacker. <laughs> uh, no, I'm gonna set these three. Mm. Kind of want someone watching the rear, so I'm gonna leave these. Oh, three. Is there anybody coming? I don't think so, but I'm gonna. Those were the last people approaching. Well, this guy was here, and then he kind of like went back. So I'm just gonna leave him hmm. there for a little bit, just to see how we get on. Um, okay. This is dicey, because you... yeah. Yeah, this is where I'm gonna get in trouble, so... You could, could probably you put here. Could, but you could also bait them. If you put Sylvain and probably Byleth in the bushes, they'll, their evasiveness will at least go up. Maybe move like, him not yeah. to the left, mm -hmm. probably more, so he's not attracting all of them. Yeah, like okay. that. Yeah. So bait yeah. that one in there. Just wait? Yeah. yeah. No. The his evasion goes up in the bushes, and Byleth should be able to take two hits, if yeah. I'm honest. Um, I mean, also think, Zelda is like... You have Flane as your... I forget what it's called. Um, when you attach a character, I think Flane is, is attached to you, so Flane should be healing you, too, sometimes. Do I, do I have her? I don't think I have oh. her in this battle. Oh, it's... She's an adjutant, it's not, so, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. So she's not in with me. Yeah. So okay. she's like just attached to Byleth, basically. Gotcha. Um, what about the what about this little, little gang? Um. Hmm. So we've got um, Lawrence. We've got Lysithia. We've got Raphael and Leone. Could probably move. Start moving them towards the bullets. Uh, I like to draw the the enemies towards me to kind of separate them that's my strategy yeah. in this in this specific battlefield yeah, because so they are going to be coming so this one back. so like that yeah yeah so you, you take a lot of it, so. yeah Oops. if you put them next to each other yeah i'm going to yeah. get um him healed up again though cuz he's yeah he's taking some hits huh yeah. thank you Appreciated. Lovely. I think that's the thing that I really like about Fire Emblem is like the constant feeling of progression and I just love, I think Callie you said it best in your review and you were just like, I love watching those numbers go up. Seriously, yeah, nice. it is constant yeah. positive reinforcement. After I, um, after we I'm... see how this turn goes, I'll read some donations, but yeah. Sweet. Hi Joe. I, uh, I, I go back and play Final Fantasy games like every five years or so and I just replayed Final Fantasy Tactics, and I was just like, like what a like it's a great game, but playing it in contrast to how far strategy games have come and mm -hmm. like how smooth it is, uh, yeah. Like if I could badly describe Final Fantasy Tactics, it's like thirty hours of leveling up by using potions on yourself. <laughs> like that's like that's how the game played out because you wouldn't you don't get any experience from getting hit or moving or anything. Like your character has to take an action, and a lot of times your character can take no action. Yeah. So like you just have to throw potions on yourself the whole time and you're hitting you're hitting your own teammates just to grind. So it doesn't hold like the gameplay doesn't hold up as well, but especially like right after playing Yeah New it... Age SRPG. I see someone's mm. coming from behind, I think. You knew it. Okay. Good, good. she's distracting. Oh, I love Ingrid too. Oh, rip. there goes Ingrid. Oh, she's out. All right. Then we're going to die because this is a mock battle, but rip. <laughs> Trigot got, got yeah. to. Oh, look at that roll. Look at me go. Beautiful. Look at how great Violet looks <laughs> in that outfit. outfit. Battle dancer. It's very. It's like being a dancer, but still holding like a, a sword and shield. Mm -hmm. Great. She did a good amount of damage. Yeah, you do have Flane um, attached, which is good. Wait. To get Flane some level, too, if you want to end up using her. Yes. Um, okay, we did get a few things. Another donation from Ryan Obermeyer, this time for Direct Relief, $10, and says, happy that I get to help people and watch Fire Emblem. Hope you all are having a great day. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. And then we have another one for Direct Relief from Acer Zen X. This is for $15. 
They say, hi, Callie, Lucy, and Joe. Thank you for all your hard work and support over these difficult times. Joe's a hilarious nerd and voices some awesome characters and hosts an amazing community. Lucy, try pulling at a princess cannon and it'll obliterate the whole battlefield. Wait, wrong game. Fear the deer. Thanks, Acer. Acer's one of my schmoes. They've been oh, awesome. one of, in my audience for a long time. Then um, I'm going over to the Black Lives Matter feed. We got one from Chris McCarthy for $10. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks, Chris. We have one from, uh, I'm very sorry if I butcher your name, Nawaz Iqbal um, for $10. And then from Akia Lin for $7. Thank you all so much for your donations to Black Lives Matter. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Aki's one of my mom and a great artist. Oh, awesome. Which is really cool. It's really nice Thank to you. see like faces and like repeat names and people in the chat a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Joe, for bringing in your good help. community. What? Thank you, Joe. Uh, no, just help me. <laughs> uh, oh. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. So, um, do you have? Are you in range to heal from? I let's move her. She can. I've got physic. Yeah, if you could physic, probably Sylvain. She's not going to be targeted from there, which is good. Oh wait, did I mess that up? Uh, uh yeah, she can't. could move him back and have her move forward. Yeah, do that because I would like her. In... Uh, Byleth is doing just fine. Byleth's doing great. Oh, hey. good, I can heal. Yeah, you can just do heal, which is yeah, very there you convenient. Go. Ew. All right. Um, I mean, if we take out this lad, I think we're still in range of, um, Bernie, though. But I would prefer to take him out, so let's... You could orient yourself around to his left, like if you move, like Raphael. Here. Yeah, like if you move more to the left, you're not as in range of Bernie. Uh, although I guess it didn't really change, but... Wait, can he go here and still attack? I don't know if he can. I think he has to be... Raphael's uh, a pretty good bullet sponge, too. He can, he he can take could, Oh, you have a combat art. Yeah, he could take a lot of hits. Oh, healing focus. I don't need it right now, so let's... Uh, let's just shift him here, and then... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attack. What do we got? Oh, yeah. Just and push it. him to death. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, big crit, yay. big boy. What a Crits are so satisfying to watch. They really are. Level up. Level up. Stronger. Okay, so now you can. This is where it's scary. Who's on the horse there? Is that Lawrence? Uh, so uh, Lawrence Leone. Yeah, here. Yeah. Probably move him towards the kind of the cluster. Like yeah. Here? Oh my God. Put him in the fray. <laughs> That's a lot of. Uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna move, going him, move him to the bushes at the very least, other than Can I the, the the one that's I'm gonna have to be the bush pointing island. at it. Yeah, I'm pointing at it like you can see what I'm pointing yeah. at. But yeah, there. Yeah. Now, uh, Leone... do you have any any combat arts or battalion battalion stuff you can use? Um, battalions ooh. yet? What have I got? You have a gambit. Oh, uh, I've got Wrath Strike, Ground, uh, Bane of Monsters, Gambit. I've got. You definitely take that that the that actuator out. The heavy. Yeah. Should we do this? Well, what you'll. I, I think if, if your gambit could stun those enemies, then that's probably a good. I I would hit all of them. I would do the gambit. Yeah. Do so you have an area troop. effect gambit? Yeah, assault uh... troop. Yeah. Do that one? You were, yeah, I would do that. Right. Then I think you can stun them so they won't be able to move. I think that's what Assault Troop does. I think if it doesn't kill him, it will. I don't know if it stuns yeah. what's around it, but I think it, he's dead anyway. Yeah. He's, he's out. Oh, good. Flames um, leveling up. Oh, no. You're oh, right. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Nice. Okay. So, what and do you we want to You could have Hilda take that one out pretty easily, I think. Make sure oh, you keep her in the range. You can't reach. Oh, yeah. never mind. Can you get that one? The horse, the horse? maybe. Yeah. 
Uh, yes. There's some there's some Kilda action. All right. Kilda? That's so oh, we good. We called her Kilda. Yeah, we had a big like anytime that she had a big hit, we had the graphics playing of Kilda on the Kilda. screen. Kilda. I love yep. that. That's it. All right. Uh, um, so then... Lucy, I would Yeah. Um let's check up on the your kind of like B team in the back, your sniper team. If nobody's coming their <laughs> way, it would be a I'm good sorry, idea. Did you say Claude was on the B team? Is that how we're going here? Is that yes. <laughs> I misspoke. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 special teams. Um, I would move. I would start moving Alpha them forward. Team. Yeah, I would start moving them across that bridge now because I don't think you have anyone coming on your six really. Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's do another Dia Abby too. Yeah. Um, Me up. <laughs> I'm ready. This is from. So ready. Jess Lynn 413 Dear Abby, I wish to open a store to provide salt for my fellow deer. What would be a good name for the store? Well, Salt and Straw is already, I think, trademarked and copyrighted. Uh, they're an ice cream store, and they're delicious. So, um, hmm, that's an interesting one. Salt, salty deers, like salty dogs. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, salt of the earth. Ooh. Salt of the earth is good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how about assault troops? Mm -hmm. You could just go with the gambit. Assault troops is good. Mm -hmm. um, I like salt of the earth though. Salt of the earth, I think, is the winner here. Uh, since you, I'm assuming that you're going to stock salt licks. You could you could get racy and just call it lick this. Uh -huh. Like the store could just be called yeah. Lick This, and people will be like, you know, that'll bring customers in there. And maybe you don't want that those customers, so that's uh. If, if you're a Rolling cool. Stones fan, Forty Licks. Forty Licks is good. Um, uh, uh, there's a wealth of options, like, honestly. Yeah, there's lots of options. You can make it like a half salt and half um, guitar store, and you could call it like Amazing Licks. Like guitar licks. Yes. Ooh, There's a lot yeah, of ways you can yeah. go with it, you know? Uh, a lot of I'm going to take out Ferdinand with um, special team Alpha. Um, nice. I don't know if anyone has any objections. I don't like how he's he snuck in. I don't like how he's snuck in. Are you going to do so. it from across the river? Is that good or is that bad? Because it could. <laughs> it'll be harder for him to get to Ignatz. Then it'll take yeah. you longer Did to get shoot? Ignatz across Didn't the Ignatz way. Get him from there? But then, can Claude go from there too? Hmm. Oh, they're not. Oh, we got. They're not. I mean, I just want so, to get. Did we determine whether or not horses can cross the river, or are they scared of water? I think they're, they're scared, scared of water. water. So they're certainly not going to come behind you, but. Yeah. Let's just. I mean. How is Ignas more powerful without a combat art? Right? It's because the combat arts sometimes take advantage of the uh, weapons triangle in, in some respect, which has is, is kind of been retired in this game. Like, the previous Fire Emblem mm -hmm. games rely more on that rock, paper, scissors, but the combat arts um, are kind of the way they retain that. That's Or it'll boost that. your range for a sacrifice yeah. in combat power. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, close. I'm just gonna go for a regular. Um, can, he can take him. Take him. Go on. Oh, I would have loved a crit there, but you know. Yeah, well. Joe, it, like, looking back at all the characters that you've voiced, like, which has been the one that's really like, not only the one that's resonated the most with every, with like the audience, um, but like, which have you really enjoyed voicing the most? Well, I mean, Claude is undoubtedly the most popular. Um, I really enjoyed, uh, we're actually, we're playing through it right now on stream. I, I played uh, this character, his name is Cesar in Just Cause 4. Yeah. Cesar is, uh, he's like a crazy alien conspiracy theorist. Mm -hmm. So like, I got to just act insane. Uh, and then we also did full mocap for that game. So that was like a really wow. great experience getting out on the volume with everybody. And like, uh, 
it was a really it was a really awesome experience and I, the day we wrapped was like it was like a rough day because i knew i wasn't going to get to hang out with anybody yeah. again so like Aww. that experience on the whole was really really great um but i don't know it's like you know it's hard to say i didn't have fun at any of these any of these jobs uh anytime i get to act like a villain is, is a lot of fun being crazy it's fun um i'm in um I'm in a Nickelodeon series right now called Lego City Adventures. Oh. We're on, I think we're halfway through like season two on, on Nick. It comes on either right before or right after SpongeBob. I can't remember. But I play one of the main characters, Duke Detain, and uh, a, fire, a fireman named Clemens. And those sessions have been probably the most fun I've had in voiceover because it's an ensemble cast in a traditional animation setting. So like I'm sitting in the room with eight other people were way better than me so like like i'm just i'm sitting in a room and like i've got roger craig smith in there i've got erica lindbeck in there troy baker and nolan north has stopped by a couple of times um fred tattashore has been in there the voice of, of dexter from dexter's lab um the voice of johnny bravo it's just like we're all in there and i'm i'm sitting there and then i get to absorb their awesomeness for like four mm -hmm. hours and we laugh our asses off like we have such a good time Probably like my biggest upset of quarantine is not being able to do, the, to do those sessions anymore because they were so, so fun. Um, yeah, I, I love, 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 love working on that on that show. It's awesome. That's like a an animation greatest hits too. It sounds like a blast. Yeah, it's wild. Like I, 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 every time I'm in there, I'm like, am I in the right room? Like, did you guys, are you looking for someone else named Joe? I know it's a common name. Okay, so But we... like you belong there, right? Like you you have a like Lucy said, you have an IMDB list to be envied at. I guess so. a lot of times like I feel like I'm still I've only I haven't even been in LA for five years yet. So like I still feel pretty new. Mm -hmm. Um and these guys have doing like these guys have been doing stuff for twenty some of them thirty years have been in, in animation. Like, you know, games I was playing when I was in high school i'm in the room with the people who are voicing them so it's uh yeah it's it's, it's a pretty interesting feeling it's awesome it can be really humbling too it is and it's great i i'm I, if you're i always say if you're the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room you're not learning anything i love being the dumbest guy in the room <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way okay. of looking at it it kind of flip imposter syndrome on its head it's like no i'm just here to learn yeah. How are you doing, Lucy? I'm doing okay. Uh, I took a turn there. See, I've, I've kind of got rid of a bunch of people, freed up my lads. Someone in the chat says, she's definitely never played this game before. I have, I just haven't touched it in a few months. <laughs> and it's like getting to grips with everything That's again. Okay. It's fine. Honestly, we were playing Portal yesterday and that is a game that I absolutely have not played since 2011. And that I love was, that yeah. It's, Fantastic, but it's like Jesus Christ. There is a lot to forget about Portal 2 because of all the like the new um, gameplay mechanics and stuff in it. Okay, mm. everyone's... it's crazy. It's been like ten years since I played that game. That's crazy. Daniel Moreno, what types of characters do you look forward to diving into but haven't had the opportunity yet? Oh, geez. Um, as far as types, I've played a pretty good gamut of characters from like scary crazy demons um which i don't do very often like that's not my voice print you shouldn't hire me to be an orc i've played orcs but in general go to jb blanc please like he's not going to ruin his voice and he's going to be way better at it than i am um but as far as like types of characters i really want to play uh i would love to play a badass like i haven't really played a real badass yet um right. I only, I'm only thinking of Just Cause because we we're streaming it, but like some of the cool stuff that like Orion Akaba, who played Rico, got to do, just like superhero landings and like look, just looking straight in the camera, like you like. I don't, I don't get to play a whole lot of badass. I'm just, I don't give off the badass vibes. I get off, I give off like the uh, young plucky hero vibes. But oh, man, I'd love to play, a, I'd love to play a real badass someday. That's that's a character that I think I'd like to play. It's interesting that you're talking about voice prints, like. How do you how do you 
like sort of identify what your niche is and like what your skill set is as the training that you can do are there voices like who are the other people in the voice acting community who you look up to um and kind of want to be sort of like known as you know a contemporary of so um as far as like discovering one's voice print for me it was just brute force i mean um the corporate, the corporate career, like all the, the e-learning and web stuff and, and the, the boring, unsexy stuff that I do, I've done a whole lot of it. So after a while, you kind of like audition for absolutely everything and you start seeing what you get picked for. Um, and the same thing with video games, like, you know, uh, any agency, any good agency is going to send you pretty much everything at, at the beginning and then start seeing what, sti what sticks. So every once in a while, yeah, I'll book, I'll book you know, someone who sounds like this or whatever, and that, but it's not... It's not very often and it can be very uncomfortable. So you learn like what feels good um, and, and you just kind of go for it. As far as like, you know, um, can people who I, I look up to, um, Troy and Nolan are both exceptional actors and they kind of sit, they sit where I am. Uh, uh, Matt Mercer as well. We kind of all sit in a, in a similar spot. Um, and it's, uh, I was actually in a, uh, I was in a Lego session and um, I had to, Nolan wasn't there, but we were in a scene that had him and the director was like, Joe, can you read in for Nolan's role? And I did it and she looks at me, she's like, you sound exactly, she's like, you sound exactly like Nolan. And it happened like three times in a row. She's like, I cannot believe how much like him you sound. So like, you, you know, you, and then once you kind of understand that feeling, you look at some of the other roles that like, he has done or other people have done you're like okay can i can i mimic that can i can i can i step into those shoes a lot of finding different character voices and finding different um ways to act for me has always been about emulating other people and then putting my own spin on it um duke detain is just a bad patrick warburton impression like that's all it is bad impressions are new characters so uh yeah, there's there's lots of ways to kind of find find your voice home, and sometimes it comes around in some really unexpected ways. Awesome. Uh, so from the chat, uh, Lauren Kelly says Claude is a badass. Just saying. Thanks. That's what I, mean, I was no, gonna I, say. Anyone's gonna argue. <laughs> I think I think maybe like superhero badass is what I'm talking about. Like Claude's Claude, you know, he's he's got some badassery for sure. Yeah. But you know. Not, I understand the difference. Super. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, I also want to uh, read Akilin also donated to Direct Relief to leave a message, another $10 donation. Uh, Akilin says, Oh, shoot. Yeah, we can write messages. Thank you for doing this, guys. We need people like you, you three in these days. And I hope that the little I give will help at least a bit. Much love to you. And then there's something written in French that I will butcher, but it means fear the deer in French. Nice. <laughs> Nice. It looks like Craig Nesla surf. <laughs> Craig Nesla <laughs> surf. Craig Nesla <laughs> surf. Um, but yes, thank you again. I'm going to check the um, Clive's Matter donations just in case. And um, I just want to say that it is not little. Every little bit counts. So um, we really it appreciate any donation amount. Thank you so much. It's funny. In the UK, there's a supermarket called Tesco. And um, oh, yeah. that tagline is every little helps and so oh, yeah. every time every time i say it i'm like i'm not secretly doing marketing for tesco here i just you know every little does help they they really got the uh they really nailed that uh tagline <laughs> I'm just on tesco uh, I'll get this guy. okay so i'm i feel like i'm 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 back in the groove of it we did lose lysithia oh we missed it which totally meant well, that. Well, no, honestly, I'm kind of glad because I was <laughs> I think in, on the stream I went <gasps> that you were answering judgment, question. And... Judgment comes down hard when you lose a character. Everyone got really upset, even though I was, I'd be like, guys, I'm on casual. They're fine. They're just taking a oh, knee okay. somewhere, okay? Everyone's just, like, ah! Just resting. It's fine. Oh, so I think even on, even on classic, I don't think you actually lose anyone in this battle. Anyway. No, it's all fake. Here. So, you know. I this imagine them like, with like foam swords, <laughs> uh, nerf arrows. Yeah, paintball guns or whatever. <clears throat> it's 
attack me if I go here? No one. Okay. Although, wait. Uh, okay. Moving on up. Um, so I moved here because there was a guy I was trying to bait, but then he got baited by everyone else, so that guy oh. needs to chill out. Okay, Ale Guards over well. there. We have this guy just, I don't know, slowly making his way around, making his way downtown. Um, the battlefield is very empty. Did everyone just kill each other and then you swept up the remains? Yeah, how did, how did you do that? I took out a couple. Oh, I know, what? but the Ale Guards side is like... See, they all seem to be connected and like, I don't know, uninterested in me, so I'm gonna go here. Nice, nice. Yeah, it can happen. Yeah, let's just go there. You know what? Why not? You're and then... Not gonna lose. Are both house leaders out? I don't see yeah. Edelgard or I Dimitri. Took, I took out Dimitri, I think. Um, Edelgard is still up here, so what we could oh, right. do is we... Just sit there. Yeah, we could ignore all them actually and just go around. And you just could, go her. could get that chest too, just as a fun bonus. Yeah, forget all what's right, in let's... there actually. Should we just pop I left everyone so right? many chests locked and closed. My chat got so mad. I, I like. I am. I'm one of those people who who goes for collections and wants to get as much as I can. But Fire Emblem is the game where I'm like, I don't trust myself to make that trip. <laughs> I will. At the, look, at the end of the game, uh, there were several people in my in my community that were offering to manage my inventory for me because I just wouldn't do it. Like, it was just like this whole <laughs> mess of crap that, like, I didn't pay attention to anymore. It's difficult. Oh, I this is a great question for Hawking. Hawking says, uh, with Fire Emblem in particular, did you find much of a difference playing Claude pre and post time skip? Claude's, um, like I was talking about when I was talking about auditioning for Claude, his, his pre and post time skip ideals and his character didn't change as much as many folks. Um, so in some cases I had an easier job, uh, but it also made it a more difficult job because that shift had to be very subtle, but had to be also very palpable. So we worked hard on sort of like Claude keeping his um, nonchalance about even stuff like war but understanding its impact. And that's what I tried to infuse uh, for the war phase. It's just like, Claude, like this is a, it's the outcome is real. It's not, you're not just playing military games anymore, but he was still making the same kind of jokes. So that subtlety was actually really difficult. Um, Patrick Seitz, who was the director on the project, really helped me a lot with uh, keeping that real. Uh, a friend of, so, a couple of my friends have messaged me and they said uh, they're big Fire Emblem fans. <laughs> my friend says, the problem with Claude is that he okay. makes IRL men seem so plain. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> the, the, what he's, the, the real thing is like he's got the chin strap beard, which is a handicap, right? He, I think the chin strap beard is just like, he was like, I'm too, I'm too gorgeous. I got to put this thing on my face to kind of tamper it down a little bit. Love that. That is exactly what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is, he's too powerful. Please give him a chin strap here. Yeah, man. So, um, the, the real trick to opening all the chests is to recruit Ash, because Ash is, he's a thief on top of whatever class you give him. So you can put him on a horse, and then, because he can pick any lock, uh, mm -hmm. you can have him, like, run around the battlefield to all the chests. It's a... Oh, I didn't know that. I, maybe I would have opened more chests. Ashes. I found that out just because I picked blue lines, and I, part of it was because I thought Ash's ability was so useful, because that's just his thing, is he can pick... He's a has the thief ability to pick locks, but no, always. You can have him do any class you want. There's a... Not to go back to the chin strap beard, but there's a great comic out there. It's like a two-frame comic, and it's... Uh, or two or three frame comic. And it's Claude, it's post time skip Claude, right? And he's wearing like a, a huge sombrero or something like that, right? <laughs> and Byleth is, uh, someone is, I think it's Byleth, it's like, Claude, take that ridiculous thing off. And in the next frame, you see him peeling off his chin strap beard <laughs> <laughs> instead of the sombrero. It's, a, it's great. It's excellent. Oh, it stunned me. Shh. 
shoot. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see what we done? can. Let's do uh, Ignatz and uh, Marianne. Is stun no movement or stun no action? I can't move. I can do an okay. action. Um, well, at least Iggy can shoot the guy. Yeah, let's... But he, he will do very You're little heal... to no damage. You could heal yourself if you have him for it. What my odds do I have? Oh, because these are heavies. How's the how's the magic going to work? Is Nosferatu going to do anything worthwhile? Not that worthwhile. Uh... So whenever I see Nosferatu, I think of the SpongeBob episode where he goes Nosferatu, and I like that's just all like that's how my brain works. Try it. I mean, it's worth using just for that. <laughs> to me, let's take a chip chip a little bit off. Um, and then let's see what can you do. What come up? I know we've done that. It's not going to be great. Oh, he can only go for that one. Because he's he's right next to the other one, he can't shoot from there. So can Mar oh, I guess Marianne probably can't. Re oh no! I've uh, been done in here. You know what? We're probably fine. You're right. Oh, yeah, we're good. Uh, One's dead. It's fine. I mean, yet. Can I? I can't die. It'll be fine. I believe. I can't take oh, can I? I can't take heat here because he's already moved. Can Leone oh, go? Leone... Leone could... Again, I don't know if you're going to be able to do much damage with the bow. No, she yeah. can't get from there either. I'm just going to... I'm just going to move him and, you know... Pray. Yeah, let's move him. Well, Raphael could actually do damage to them. Yeah. But let's... I'm just going to try and lead him on a merry chase, I think. Um... That's not a bad idea. They don't move very well. Yeah. Okay. Who hasn't gone? I don't think it matters at this point. Tamor asks, um, Joe, how often do you think about that episode of Friends where Joey tries to learn French and keeps saying Je m'appelle Claude? I actually kind of totally forgot about it until just now. Uh, but that's super applicable to uh, my community because m one of my mods is French and I'm always yelling nonsense at her. It's not really French, it just sounds like French. Uh, and Je m'appelle Claude, wow, that's really like... That's really apropos, which is not French. I think it's Latin. Yeah. I'm, not um, sure. I'm very sorry for butchering the French. I just I took Spanish. I just can't. That's okay. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Uh, guys, I don't know how we survived that. I think um, Ignatz has one health. Ooh. Is that? Oh, he's got six. Oh my god. Has one health. <gasps> Knock him out. Incredible. Oh, God, worry about it. oh my god. Okay. The power of the deer. That's right. Uh, okay. Please, please do a heal. Let's do a big heal. Well, that's a nice heal. That's a lovely heal. Okay. Feeling better about this. Let's do another dear Abby. I've been loving these questions. Sure. Mm. I like this one from X Mirror Mirror. Dear Abby, you're always answering our questions and giving us dear advice. But I can't help but wonder if there are any questions, if there are any answers or advice you need. If you had to say, dear audience, what question would follow? That's a, that's uh, that's quite the curveball. Yeah. What would I ask the audience? Let's see. Well, uh, dear audience, why are you following me? Like, what? <laughs> what? Are you guys, you guys, got to go out in the world and 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 find someone that's way cooler. Find someone that's actually a badass. You're a badass. Uh. Yeah. Why are like, dear, dear dear audience? Why are you so good to each other? What my, one of the things about my my audience that like blows my mind is that they take care of each other so much mm -hmm. like we have a private discord for twitch subscribers right and uh first of all like i never created a single channel in the discord everyone did it themselves and it includes like a cooking 
channel where people are sharing family recipes and a homework channel where people help each other with their homework. How are you so wholesome? Like how, how, how does this group of people exist that is just so great to each other? Um, I mean like, yeah, that, that's all I see in my Discord is, is people helping people. And uh, I just don't understand how you're not worse people. That's all. That's, that's, my, that's my dear audience question. How are you not crappier? That's I all I got. That, that's great though. And it, like, I think it speaks to you as a person that you are bringing all these people around you, whether, you know, intentionally or not, they've all graduated towards you and they're all spreading that positivity among themselves. Maybe, yeah. or it speaks better to them that they're not corrupted by my awful influence. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just how strong they are. They can, they can resist Joe's Egypt. Uh, I, I think there is really something to be said for fostering a positive community. And I, I do think like, yes, I think a lot of the credit goes to moderators and community members, but um, really awesome. yeah, like as somebody who has tried to foster communities like that in the past, like a lot of that be really difficult and, you know, it, it's, I think I've said stuff was humbling before on the stream, but it is really humbling to see people be so wholesome. Yeah. And great. Yeah. Okay, can we get oh the chest? One away. I can't open it. <laughs> oh. Wait, do I even have a key? Does anybody oh. have a key? Oh, God, I don't think they do. Uh, well, how do I? What's the easiest way to check? Uh, items, here we go. Let's look at the convoy. The convoy. Um, mm, mm. I don't think I have a key, you know. Oh, I do! Mm. One chest key. Okay, let me... Okay, yes? so... I will give that to... Uh, Lawrence. Can't move. Convoy. I give it trade. No, I'll just take it. Can I give that to now, Lawrence? Now trade. Now mm -hmm. trade. Lawrence, give. Sweet. Nailed it. Okay. okay. And then off you go. Nope. Go, Lawrence. Go <laughs> there. Go somewhere else. Okay. It's okay. Do I can't drift? I uh, was talking about this earlier, but my um, my Joy Cons are like, screwed, for lack of a better term. Um, and my um, I think my Pro Controller is also not doing so hot. Like it's oh, really? definitely drifting a little bit, and I'm not using that as an excuse. Chat but I'm using it as an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> like, drifting yeah. really, it's a pain. The first People... time I experienced it, I was trying to play Smash Brothers against somebody and I'm like, this oh, is no. stupid. Oh. Well, the thing is, is that um, my right Joy-Con doesn't charge anymore. Lame. Which oh, makes, no. which makes um, what do you call it, uh, ring fit, very difficult because it doesn't track half of the movement. And so I'm oh. getting shouted at by the ring con lad who's saying I'm not doing everything. I'm like, I like thinks you're doing push-ups like this. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so got a nice little heel going here. Aelgard's all that's left, right? Aelgard and who? There's is one. Me? Probably Hubert or Linhart. There's two lads over here, but they're not really doing anything. So yeah, what are they doing? They're hanging each other. <laughs> hanging out. They're hanging out. They're having a lovely time. I kn I knew those guys in in military school. I know who <laughs> they are. <laughs> like they just they don't want to get involved right now. They've seen how it's gone down. Yep. They're just gonna wait for that. They know that we can't get over there because of the bridge. Carnage has been immeasurable. So I'm just gonna move everyone up to be, I guess, in position, and then we'll take the battle to Edelgard. Sounds good. Um, should we do another Dear Abby while we while Hit we me. prep? Okay, so 
Uh, PBR Chase, uh, aka Zach. Dear Abby, I seem to have taken your fear the deer catchphrase too close to heart, and I am now terrified of these pointy headed ungulates. What a great word. Um, <laughs> how can I shake my newfound phobia of deer? So now you're deer phobic. You took fear of the deer too literally, and now you have a case of, of deer phobia. Uh, totally natural, happens all the time. Uh, particularly if you hear deer in the wild. They have, they make a very terrifying noise that I think is, um, actually more, it's scarier than, like, bears. It's, they just make a really hideous noise. So, if you've got, if you've got deer phobia, uh, we, we were just talking to someone that has, uh, recently set up a salt shop. So, you go ahead and go to Salt of the Earth, and you buy some salt lakes. And, yeah. uh, you can hang those hang those in your backyard and that you'll the deer will come and you'll see that they're generally very docile um don't don't try to approach or pet them uh they could be carrying lyme disease but uh i think that that'd be a good way for you to to, to get over to get over the fear of the deer now just to be clear you should fear the deer um but it may be because of lyme disease and not because they're yeah. Yeah. just be careful. not because they Techie. Check yourself for ticks, okay? Everybody knows. Oh, my roommate is very afraid of ticks. And as a British person, they are not really considered a threat in the UK. They're not really a thing there. Not really a thing at all. Um, and we went hiking once and um, Greg got kind of attacked by ticks. They they kind of all just went towards him. Yeah. And uh, Jen thing. and I, my other roommate, were completely fine. I have se several people in my family that have contracted limes. It's, oh my uh, God. it's weird. It's so God. Well, Greg was, um, when he worked on a paper, he did a kind of year-long investigation into just how much Lyme disease can affect the body. And oh, yeah, so especially you know, catch it. Yeah, he's naturally very, very afraid of it. And uh, Jen and I, Canadian, British person, just like, yeah, we're just going to go on a hike. It's going to be great, man. And then Greg's like, no, we're never doing this again. <laughs> Pokemon Go from your phones. <laughs> We're not doing yeah. this. Okay, so I think everyone's pretty much in position. This lad, he's you know one hit. He's having a he's having a good time, but I think we're pretty much Where'd ready. The other I one just... go. Wasn't there a guy in a red robe over there? They killed him. Killed oh, okay. him. Yeah. So um, I think on the next turn, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the move. And uh, yeah, we'll try and go for it. Here he comes. <laughs> Whoa, here he comes. Very I'm gonna scary. Hit you guys, you just wait. <laughs> I'm gonna swing this big shield. <laughs> so let's take, let's try and take some pop, pop shots. Can I do that? Hmm. Not really. How can she hit me from there? You know what? Let's just let's just bring it one in. Um, we have another ten dollar donation from Matt Hawking. Thank you. So much Thank once you. again, Matt, for your support. Great. And while Lucy is moving some people, I will just point out again that we are raising money for both Black Lives Matter Global Network and for Direct Relief for COVID-19. The links are in the, not the description, but right, oh God, this way. And you yeah. can go to both of those uh, bit.ly links and um donate if you so choose we would very much appreciate the donations anything helps and uh otherwise thank you so much for watching and supporting us oh kimmy boy in the chat says the stream is so wholesome, <laughs> so wholesome. nice to just chat and play games yeah oh, here we go Look. yeah oh, there we go it. yeah otherwise i feel like if i'd left him he would have a hundred percent like i would have got it'll go down to this he would have come up behind me and just absolutely obliterated me in the last turn. So you got to level right. up for quad. That's perfect. So okay, let's see what's gonna happen here. She's a throwing she's axe. Throwing. That's, how. that's a gigantic axe. This is the like, throw. Like that's that's unreasonable. I would Linhart's say. gonna take a nap. Okay. Um, okay. Linhart. Mm. All right. Sure is there. So. <laughs> and Linhart is there. Sure is there. What can we do? Oh, okay. You can end Linhart. <laughs> oh, 
Oh no! Oh no! We managed to oh, no, no. get four hits. Oh, you got. You, oh, so. is there another one? There's uh -huh. another one coming. Okay. All right. Okay. Where is oh my heels? Oh no! I can't. Let's. We haven't used physic yet, so. You're all right. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Come on in, Marianne. Girl. Come join the party. All right. So, oof, you are not where I'd like you to be health-wise. So I'm just gonna leave you. Have a, uh, I was gonna say, do you have a vulnery? Yes, I do. But I can, I can rewind, right? What's yeah. I won't. No. No, yeah. I think I think it's fine. I think, I think we're all right. Let's um. Oh. Oh, oh that's it anyway. <laughs> oh, you got the Lance of Ruin on Sylvain. Okay. Oh, I can change that. Oh, no, why not? Why not? I do it. That's all, it's, that's all it's gonna do. I kind of like oh. feel bad, but then I don't because I. Whoops! That's. Yep. Not bad. Feels Look at all those Guess points go up. I love it. Yeah, that's a nice oh. level. I hate to admit. So, hate to admit. It seems this is as far as the Black Eagle house, as far as the Black Eagle house goes. Careful, please. All right. Uh. You mean move again? not the end? Are you missing somebody? Oh, I'm missing someone. Oh no. Is this, is this someone? Oh no. Uh. Do, uh. What? Who are we missing? <laughs> what? Where? Do I have to stand in the middle or something? No, no, no. You just, there's someone that you haven't killed. Unless you need to take the squares. No. Who else is out there? Oh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh my god, are you kidding? What? <laughs> no, Mercedes. Mercedes, what were you doing back there the whole time? Oh my god. First of all, Mercedes, you coward! Yeah. <laughs> back. Oh, okay. No. All right. Come on, everyone. Slowly ugh, making the way downtown. Back we go. Da -da 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 -da. I can't. And I'll, and I'll kill you, <laughs> Mercedes. Ah, <clears throat> <sighs> that sucks. Okay. Well, you know. Enemy phase. Let me guess. She's not gonna do anything. Yeah. Like, what's oh my she gonna god. Do? My god. Okay. All right. Who's got some range on them like that? Oh, and it doesn't help that these boys are all the way back here. This is. You know what? It's fine. It means we get to revel in the victory a little bit longer. <laughs> She's not gonna last long. <laughs> absolutely not. She's gonna get out. get over there. Through here. Uh, okay. See, if this was Final Fantasy Tactics, she'd be actively running away from you and you pull your hair out for the next eight turns. <laughs> Is Tactics on mobile? Because it's one of those games that I feel like I, I should. I believe you can play War of the Lions on mobile, but I'm yeah. not sure. All right. Didn't it just have an anniversary on Fantasy Tactics? Uh, it did, and I think they released the soundtracks on Spotify. I think Ooh. that's what they did for it. That might have been like four months ago. Um, I've lost all sense of time. I don't know. What I know, it right? Matthew Hawking says, just give up and let Mercedes win. Yeah, just, just <laughs> it. surrender. It. No. You did it, Mercedes. Well Tom done. Tom says, if you let Messi win, it would indeed be a Messi win. In our yeah. anniversaries calendar, we have Final Fantasy Tactics anniversary tomorrow, but oh. I don't know if that is the Japanese release or the Western release. I don't know. Um, that's one thing for the person who made that calendar, I, I want to ask now. Um, well, that was Miranda, my intern, who is fantastic. June 20th, 1997 is what it says. North US America was um, no, North America was indeed January. Gotcha. So oh. tomorrow is uh, the Japanese release anniversary, and then the four months ago, six months ago, I guess was 
Yes. America. All right, she can hit me from here. So let's let's get her in. Let's start this. Oh, hello. Let's silence her so she can't get me. Oh, mercy, please. Uh, question from the chat from Tom Brown. Out of all the announced games, Sony, Microsoft, EA, what's your top upcoming game? Ooh, what about you guys? Have to be have to be all of. So. What what is it? Sorry, but my uh, dog barking. If you can hear that, by the way. Is that Benji mm -hmm. or Lucy? It's both of them. <laughs> we have a lot when we do uh, the podcast. Sometimes uh, Callie will refer to Lucy, and I think it's me, but it's actually just the dog. And it's oh wow. It's surprising the number of situations in which you can get confused. Um, yeah. The record, I, I named the dog before I had any friends named Lucy. I was but now I have two friends named Lucy, and it's confusing. <laughs> um, um, anyway, the question. It upcoming game. Yeah, what's, I, what's, what are you excited about? I'm really excited about Cyberpunk. Um, obviously, sad that it's been delayed, but like at the same time, I think delays are ultimately a good thing. Um, I, you know, I'd rather they not rush it. I'd rather they spend all the amount of time on it that they want to and that they're able to. Um, and honestly, I was probably going to get it on next gen anyway. So it would have been a kind of strange situation if I bought it for like Xbox One or PS4 mm -hmm. and then had to wait a couple months and then play it again. Uh, I, th I think there is like cross save between the two, but I, I think if I'm going to start it on one platform, I'd rather started on the platform I'm gonna see it through with um so I'm really excited about cyberpunk I have Last of us and after this that's gonna be my my afternoon is making, my, making myself sad yeah yeah I'm uh I'm actually I've been like really really busy over the last couple weeks so I haven't kept up a lot with some of the releases but the one thing that I did see I was a huge huge fan <clears throat> of the old Star Wars flight sims. Oh, like, so I played awesome. the original X-Wing and TIE Fighter, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, X-Wing Alliance. So, and I, I haven't had a chance to even look at the trailer yet. I only saw, I saw like the announcement graphic that mm -hmm. didn't, I don't even think it showed any gameplay footage, but I'm really interested to see what they do with that. Uh, if it's, if it's going to be like, if it's going to be just kind of like a spiritual successor or if it's going to be I need a joystick and a PC to play this. Because I remember, like, I bought a joystick specifically for that game and had so much fun playing that game. It looks really cool. Uh, you can play the whole thing in VR, they were saying at the announcement. Oh, yesterday. man, that's awesome. Yeah. And all of the UI is, like, built into the cockpit itself. There's no, like, floating, you know, oh. like, all... Look at this! Come Do it! Guys. Did it, killed them all, killed more, uh, defeated more enemies, but also MVP. There you go. Look at that. Um, yeah, but it looks really cool. They have a, um, like a little briefing room so you can meet up with your squad mates before you take on fights. Oh my God. I have literal goosebumps listening to you describe this game. Those uh, were like, they were very formative for me, I think. It just looks like, I don't know, just. Because I, I, I'm less excited about the VR because I get really terrible motion sickness. Okay, yeah, but sure. I think in the Frostbite engine, um, whenever I've ever played Battlefront, the X-Wing versus TIE Fighter missions have always been my favorite. And so yeah. I'm 100% just down for a whole game of that. There's a single player storyline. You can play both like Rebel and Imperial. It just looked really cool. Yep, I, was, I always loved to play the Imperial. I was always flying Imperial craft whenever I could choose. Yeah, it looks so much fun. Yep, so I'm really excited about that. Callie, what about you? Um, I'm really intrigued by Deathloop. Um, <gasps> oh, I love that too. Yeah. Oh, really, really got to know more about that. And then I'll yeah. cheat a little and I'll say new Pokemon Snap. That's, yeah. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be an exciting one. Um, we talked about this on Gamespot After Dark this week. Um, just. Our Pokemon Snap memories. Um, I'm I'm interested to see what they what they do with it because it's been 20 years. It's been more than 20 years. It's been a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a uh, weird because I I 
don't get to look forward to games very often because I'm so focused on what I'm playing. So, you know, I just finished mm. the Last of Us review. And so I've been very head down in The Last of Us. Um, now I'm moving on to the Pokemon DLC. So me, sometimes I don't even have like time to, to, to get excited about things. Um, which is why I really like E3 because it's like a, it can be a time to get excited about stuff. Um, but the the thing that I was sad about the most is is no Mass Effect remaster announced during EA Play. It yeah. really broke my heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Gotta have it. Uh, chat, uh, a lot of people bring out Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Mm. Yeah. I'm, really excited. I'm behind. I still haven't played Odyssey yet. I, I finished Origins maybe like eight months ago. And uh, I think I just, I think I ordered um, Odyssey. I'm excited to play it. I loved Cassandra, her character in Odyssey, and I loved all the changes that they made to gameplay. Like, I think in Origins, it was a little, like, they were finding their feet with that new combat style, and then in Odyssey, yeah. they really nailed it. Um, the thing about Odyssey for me is that it's overwhelmingly huge. <laughs> there were yeah. so many missions in it that um and like they just keep adding dlc and they keep adding like new level caps and so it's like a never-ending game which as someone who like really appreciates a, a story it's kind of terrifying to open up and seeing how many quests you can have ac games have gotten overwhelming that way for sure like ever since even like black flag it started to feel like yeah. oh man there's a lot to do there is a lot to do yeah mm. um Really quick, we have a ten dollar donation to Black Lives Matter from M Gore. Thank you so much. Thanks, Em. Yeah, I, I there's a lot to be excited about. I, I am very excited for Cyberpunk, but like obviously that was your answer, Lucy, so I had to come up with a new one. But I do want to put that to out catch there. Up. Like I really I've been really out of the loop over the last couple of weeks. The Sony oh, was on like they it, it was just like announce, announce, announce. Uh, Resident Evil 8. Got yeah. Very yeah. good for. Um, I'm gonna say you all worked hard. Everyone. There were like, I don't know, over 50 games announced during Guerrilla Collective and um, the PC Game Show, yeah. and that was like so hard to keep up. I was, I'm still catching up with those because I have to put together a releases calendar for the reviews that we want to do. Um, so I'm still kind of like, I'm trying to pick apart like, oh, what was that one? Oh, that was the. Uh, Know, the arcane one. Oh yeah, oh, oh, Raphael Colantonio. Um, a lot of really interesting stuff. I think I I love as well that it's like obviously E3 is not happening, but we have all of these different events now that publishers can just kind of. I don't know. It feels like everything being a bit more spread out means more things get more time to shine rather than just you know the big hitters from like the Sony conference or the Microsoft conference. Everyone gets their own little time. Yeah, it's it's hard, I guess, for the like to compete for time. Yeah. Even the, like, there's so much great content. Um, it's it's hard to shine. You're right. Hmm. Um. Let's do. Oh, here we go. A couple more dear Abbeys, because I've got some that we really like. We've got about 20 minutes left of the stream, <laughs> so let's kind of blast through some of these and get some. Shoot. Life Fire them at me. So this is from Golden Zari One. Dear Abby, I've just finished my school quarter and I'm now on summer break. But with me being so focused on schoolwork and being hunched over my desk, I've realized I've accumulated a lot of back pain. What's a dough to do? Sincerely, breaking back dough. I think probably one of the things you're experiencing is that you're trying to become a, a bipedal uh, creature. Um, that may be one of the reasons why your, your back is hurting. If you're a deer, uh, you really need to be using all four of your limbs to walk. Um, and uh, like the whole stand-up desk phenomenon, don't do that. You you need a you need a a, a quadrupedal desk. Um, I don't know if they sell them. If they don't, then this could be sort of like a million-dollar idea for you. But I think the most important thing for you to do is stop walking like a biped and uh, get back down to your your deer roots and uh, walk like a normal deer. I think that back pain is going to go away. How would a desk for deer work? Uh, I think poorly. It was. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think it would. I don't think that. <laughs> no. You know, like those uh those dog food bowl like little they make little desks for like bigger dogs so the dog yeah. food is like up yeah. at their level kind of like that that's how i'm picturing it yeah, yeah. Would say, like a hole dug in the ground with four um holes for legs 
and then just like a big hole for the face and so you're just kind of like like a massage table but as a dad. yeah i was about to say it sounds like a spa like a deer spa going on Ooh. Um, there is a sauna in this game so i could see a deer spa happening mm -hmm. uh this is a great one from kawaii muzet dear abby i have finals next week and i'm worrying about passing my classes how do I need to be? How do I calm down without getting anxious? Uh, even though I have to study before I take the final exam, how can I get my stress to stop? I need support for from a, I need support for a deer that it helps me to calm down without getting stressed. Signed, worry. Okay, uh, so, Kawaii, um, geez, that's study, a lot. If, it's that's a lot. If you're studying. If you're studying for uh, your tests, and I think um, Kawaii, uh, I think people are, uh, Kawaii is hearing impaired. So I think my mods are typing out what I say. I'll try to talk slowly. Thanks, mods. Um, uh, if you're studying for a test and you're getting worried, uh, from a deer perspective, I think probably you shouldn't be taking tests. Uh, I think that, you know, the only test that you should be taking is one in in being peaceful in a meadow which you should just pass by uh by being a deer i think you're i think you're okay there um the um i think uh let's 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 think here i'll give my mods time to catch up i see them typing because you're awesome uh that is awesome So to give real to give real advice, I'll, I'll switch into real advice mode. Make sure you're breaking it into small, consumable chunks for studying. Don't try to do everything at once. Um, I, I use the when I talk about multitasking, I give people advice on multitasking and productivity. I talk about how computers work. Computers don't do multiple things at the same time. They use deferred procedure calls where they're rapidly sweeping through lots of different things with pinpoint focus. So if you're studying for your tests, try to focus on like one very small bite-sized chunk. Um, and once you get that, move on. Don't try to do multiple things at, at once. Uh, that's, that's the thing. I think you're going to be fine. You're, I, I know you're a smart person and you've probably been studying throughout the semester. Really, most of the time when it's like, my test's coming up, what should I do? You should have been paying attention the whole semester, but you've probably been paying attention the whole semester, so don't worry too much. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. And I think as well, meditation is very, very helpful. In yeah. It's where you can get stressed, and I am a huge proponent of it, just taking five minutes for yourself to try and not take your mind off it and just breathe and think about a calm deer in a meadow. Yeah, there you go. A couple times a day. And hopefully so it's I'll... tackling tackling tests and and multiple classes and tests at once is kind of like a fire emblem battle. You really oh, have yeah. to do one action at a time. If you try to think about everything all at once, you're going to get a little bit overwhelmed. Yep. Um, that was definitely my biggest struggle in school was I would think about everything I had to do and get stressed yeah. out and then I wouldn't even know where to begin. And the answer to that is just to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. So start with just one class, nice try. go from there because otherwise you can really easily get yourself overwhelmed. But you you can do it and you know you can do it. Tam says, sleep is super important when studying. Don't burn the midnight oil too much. You've got to get shut eye to process all the information that you've learned. That's a really good tip. Yes. And yep. if, you, if you get stressed and you're lying awake thinking about things, make a list of the things you have to do tomorrow. So you're not going over it in your head thinking, oh, I've got to remember to do this. You've written it down and that can, and like hopefully that can give some release. Mm -hmm. yep. And to oh. celebrate some good advice, we have a $20 anonymous donation to Direct Relief. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anonymous. <laughs> Oh, Geralt, which is what I, I love Geralt of Rivia so much. Geralt of Rivia, the joke. Yeah. Uh, Tom Brown says this is like GameSpot ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
just having a chill time. Am Friday. I, am, I, am I talking too close to the microphone? Is that like? <laughs> have you ever considered doing ASMR? Um, so I have. Uh, not just considered, but I have accomplished it. Uh, I'm I'm one of the, the male leads in in a, a Tome game called Mr. Love Queen's Choice, which is just a great name in and of itself. Yeah. And uh, nice. they have several ASMR, uh, they call them close to you sessions. They are the most awkward thing I probably have ever done in voiceover, but it's also really fun. It's just, it's very strange to talk like a quarter of an inch away from a microphone mm -hmm. about uh one of them is um one of them is i could take these antlers off one of them is uh uh, uh counting sheep trying to help someone fall asleep mm -hmm. so like the character is like the character's name is gavin so gavin is trying to help the heroine fall asleep so like it's just i was in a room and i counted to 100 at about this level it's like just really really and it's just so like, yeah. So yes, I've done ASMR and it is it is a wild, strange experience. I, you know, Otomo Games incorporating ASMR is truly inspired. I love it. Yeah. That. And, and the fans really like it. Like people get really excited when a new ASMR section comes out. I'm trying to remember, there was a, there was an anime um, about, it, it, it was Pillow Boys anime and the Japanese, I think it was Makoro no Danchi. Um, let me see if that's right, but, uh, it was about, like, it was really short episodes, just, every episode was just a different kind of boy trying to get you to go to sleep. Oh, yeah. It's really, um, interesting. Let me see if I, I don't think I got that name exactly right, but it's, let me see. And she. Really weird. It was so weird. I would not, like, recommend it, but. Uh, I feel it like it was a unique experience. It yeah. was a unique experience, and I feel like this, it's a couple years old now. So I, I feel yeah. like the the otome kind of service games, if we will, um, have evolved from that and improved. Sure, yeah. it, Joe, that's, is there, that's awesome. Is there a name for when you're kind of doing anime when you have to do the, the oh? The kind of re the anime reacts is there a name for that and like i know you just said that doing asmr felt awkward is there anything when you're doing voiceover that feels awkward or like just i guess not natural to do i made a youtube video uh about this and it was a it was a joke sketch between two people both of whom were played by me a di anime director and an actor in the booth and uh it's it's been my most successful YouTube video. Like people in Taiwan are writing news articles about it. Um, <laughs> but it basically is ex exactly about what you're you're talking about. And and yeah, at first, you know, I can see it being really awkward if you got into anime dubbing and you had never seen anime. Yeah. You'd be like, and that's kind of the, the idea of what I was. I'm pointing at the booth because I filmed half of my half of myself in the booth. Um. And it was like, uh, the director's like, yeah, okay, the next noise I need from you is a nod. And I'm like, I'm sorry, <laughs> nods make noise? Do nods make noise? Do people make noises when they nod? Is that kind of a thing? And then like, it'll be like, yeah, this is a really, really emphatic nod, like really nod hard. And so like, you'll get those kind of directions. Uh, uh, and, yeah, just be like, mm-hmm. And uh, uh <laughs> Yeah, there's there's all sorts of uh, there was another one where it was like, yeah, I need I need a hesitation reaction, and it's like, well, there's there's three dots on the page, I'm like yeah, those three dots make noise in Japanese. You have to say it, uh, and it's just like so yeah, people making hesit like huh, hmm, ah. yeah, it's just it's something you get used to. Uh, it, it was easy to step into having like been an anime fan growing up, but I can really imagine like how weird it would be. And have no context for anime and then be asked to act in that very specific style. Yeah. Uh, I, I love sure that so much because I, I know exactly what nodding hard sounds like in anime. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I can really, really hear that. You can. It is like if you if you've never watched it, like that's just not something you encounter. Yeah, like not outside of anime really. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that. 
I love that feature though. Being able to see the yeah. chat log helps me so much. Cause uh, sometimes great. I'll be like, wait, what? I wasn't paying yeah. attention. Persona 5 has it too. And I've really mm -hmm. appreciated that recently. As I'm going through Royal. The um, the chat has gone very hard on deer puns right now. Which oh, I'm good. A big proponent Love of that. Um, so hang on. Uh, Nawa says, what do you call a deer with no eyes and no legs? Oh, wait, no, no, hang on. Nawa says, what do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. No idea. What do you call a deer with no eyes and no legs? Lunch? Still no idea. Oh, okay. Uh, Tam says, what do you call a cute deer? I don't know. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> KDC says, the jokes, oh dear. Uh... <laughs> What do you call a popular deer? Where did you find that picture? It was in the library. A deer I don't know. Deer friend. A deer friend. Mm. Like there are so many of these. What KDC? What's a deer's favorite bread? This one's very important. Uh, on deer bread. <laughs> one deer bread? <laughs> Sourdough. Oh. Take possession of it for now. They go like mine. Oh, that's good. Sourdough. Yeah. Like I am surprised there are that many deer jokes. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, oh, okay, this is a very good Dear Abby. This is from Bobatori. I'll let you get on the... Okay. Dear Abby, lately I've been listening to original Disney Channel songs with another deer in Greg Chun's server and felt nostalgic, especially since I've moved on to gaming in these past few years. What's a deer to do since she's feeling this way? Signed, a nostalgic deer. You could go back and play some really old games. Yeah. Go back and play uh, the Lion King game on, on Genesis, right? That game is so hard, you're going to spend 10 minutes, and then you're going to be like, that's fine. I'm done with nostalgia, okay? I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get Simba over this friggin' whatever this is. I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. So, yeah, that's how you cure your, your nostalgia. You go and you play the Lion King game for five minutes, and you'll never want a game again. Or you play something sure. like Kingdom Hearts, where you get, like... There you go. Brand new you know, Final Fantasy-esque mix of the classic Disney. And they have all the music. So, you know. That sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Originally Disney. I wish there was a way I could like give you my antlers, but you're, you're kind of below me in the screen. <laughs> you look a little bit like you're wearing them, but. There we go. Well, no, although they're saying original Disney Channel songs. So if you're meaning stuff like Hannah Montana and Camp Rock and High School Musical, can't help you there. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. yeah, that's I, I, I do tap out there. Sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, this I, is a great. I, um, is there a Hannah Montana game really quickly? Do we know if there's there's a Corey in the house game? If there's not a Hannah Montana game, I think I have to make it. Yeah. There is. Anyway, absolutely. Have game. Um, I, I wonder, is it like a rhythm action? It must be a rhythm action. I don't know. It's like a I mean, Hatsune Miku Project Diva Mega Mix, but I gotta um, ask Hannah Dr. Montana Google. Song. <laughs> she didn't care before she found out. So Corey in the House, Disney Hannah or Nickelodeon? Montana, the movie, the game, it's called. Hannah Montana, oh. the movie, the game. Oh, I love stuff like that. There's an old like, Harry Potter game that's like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one, the movie, the game. There's one, I think it's the longest title in video games. I think it's a Power Rangers game. I think it's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, the game. I think something like that. So we're Whatever about to get we're about to get SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for B B Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Another very long title. Oh, speaking of uh, cartoon speaking of kids channels. I mean, Kingdom Hearts 2. Point, was it Kingdom Hearts 2.8 HD a Dream Drop? A passage was my favorite. They're all game, so not, like Kingdom Hearts titles are an art in and of themselves. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, it's like the Jackson Pollock of video game titles. <laughs> Just throwing everything at the wall to see. What yeah, that's all. I it's felt great. bad. The uh, the Kingdom Hearts they they had a new. I think it's a new mobile game they were doing, and they <laughs> tweeted out, "What do you think the game is called?" And I was like. Well, no one's gonna get this. What are you talking yeah, about? Who's gonna guess that? I'm gonna give uh, Lindhart some flowers. 
Um, I was about to say we should have. It would be cool oh, to do a tea party. Oh. Oh yeah. Wait, hang on. They're gonna do. That wasn't so. Bad. That wasn't so. They bad. cleaned the horse poop. <gasps> Perfect. They did it. They're doing great. Oh dang! Um, we oh, have great. a great direction from Corinth the Drag, Corin the Dragon. Okay. Dear Abby, I am madly in love with Gatekeeper, but the only time he ever speaks to me is when he has nothing to report. What am I doing wrong? What's a deer to do? <laughs> well, okay. Look, my chat gets so mad at me when I hate on Gatekeeper uh, because everybody loves him so much. But um, look, your trust in the opinion of a guy, I'm not saying you need to pick better men. I'm saying that his name is Gatekeeper. And in the entire time of Fire Emblem Three Houses, he had two, two or three opportunities. Was it three opportunities? Where somebody, like he had the opportunity to actually keep the gate. And he blew it three times. He biffed it. He biffed it three times, okay? I'm not saying that he's not a cheery, nice young man. I'm saying that maybe uh, if he was like, yeah, I'm gonna change my gatekeeper to a great marriage person. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying the way, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And he does not keep gates. No. That is such a good point. And sage I'm advice. Just Kyle's gonna stab me. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have standards. I don't even want to look at my chat right now. Like everyone. So <laughs> like oh God! Yeah, everyone's like, "How dare you? Shut your mouth!" <laughs> I'm, being, I'm, being gatekeeper. I'm being threatened with baguettes. <laughs> Where is everyone? All right. Oh, hello. So we only have a couple of minutes left of stream. I know I'm obsessed with it. It reminds me of uh, Angelina Jolie at the Oscars that one year. Oh she, yeah, I get that. The big yes. slit up the side of the dress, and and everyone just kind of posed the leg out for a while. Um, okay, I think we should end the stream on one on one last dear Abby question. Hit me. Um, let me. Battle deer. <laughs> I like this one. So from Garasword, okay. Dear Abby, recently I, as a deer, have been training on an island that is supposedly of armor. However, when I got there, there was no armor to be found. All that was there was a little bear cub doing kung fu. Should I help said cub with its training? Again, so specific. This is a really specific, and at first I thought it was an Animal Crossing reference. Pokemon. And now, I'm sorry. Pokemon. It's Pokemon. There's a Pokemon reference. Um, Pokemon. I don't know. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I think you should get the hell out of there. I think this sounds. I think this sounds like. I think you're. I think someone's trying to trick you into being uh, party to, uh, what sounds like a cockfighting ring. Back. And that, like, like, you know, you don't want to be involved in animal combat, okay? So you should probably get off that island before, uh, before you get involved in some illicit activity that may or may not be considered animal abuse. Yeah, that's your best bet. You run away. You run away. But unless Which you're very good at, thankfully. Unless it was like a kung fu panda type situation where the okay. parents was training. Yeah, if there are dumplings involved, maybe stick around for lunch. <laughs> There, I, I can confirm there is um, soup involved, and Ooh. and it, it is a you know there a little more to it. I I would say stick with it. I would say that this this cub got he's got some moves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm intrigued. Yeah, you never know. You never know. There's a whole okay. of, there's a dojo. There's a man named Mustard, a lady named Honey. Together they make honey and mustard. Very good. Very good. I like that a lot. There's a lot of food stuff going on, so you, right. there's, there might be a good snack in it for you, is what I'm saying. One of oh. my chat members just says Joe is salty because he doesn't understand. He didn't understand how to play Pokemon. Look, okay, it just wasn't. <laughs> it just wasn't my kind of game. Okay, just because I couldn't catch anything. Whatever, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm not salty. It's fine. I understand. I'm terrible at Pokemon. I feel like 
even I, I kind of went back to Pokemon Red a few years ago and I was like, how the hell did I do this as a child? Yeah, I played Pokemon beyond... Blue all the way through as a kid. Yeah. Um, well, we are pretty much out of time. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Give some advice, guide me through that big battle, which we completely trounced everyone in. Mm -hmm. um, Callie, Seven thank you so much for joining us too. And thank you to everyone in the chat who's been sharing deer puns, asking for advice, and obviously donating. Links are still gonna be active, I think for like three or so weeks. Um, and next week we have a bunch more cool streams. We are gonna be playing Red Dead 2. We've got the last podcast on the left. Our team, Games for Universe, are doing an entertainment quiz. We've got a tour of Sky Oblivion. We've got tons of stuff, so come along, join in the fun. Uh, please give generously. Joe, any final words? No, thank you guys for what you're doing. This is awesome. I hope the, the, the rest of the Cherry streams go great. Thank you so much. All thank right. you guys. Bye. See ya. Bye.